Yeah. Nice work, Jason. Nice work. Welcome back to Wook Plus. I'm Weekend Wook, joined by Kev, the great one, and T. What's up, guys? Mm -hmm. It's the lot of sorts. It's the day before, the lot for the run. I'm very excited about that. Uh, night zero. It is night, night zero. zero. Everybody who is already in Vegas, I hope you were on your baddest behavior. Look at that. Chuck's like fucking Chuck, I hope man. you were on your baddest behavior. Yes. Have fun, dude. Rage <laughs> responsibly, though. Careful on that venue. Man. I'm assuming if you're in Vegas now, you're there because you didn't want to deal with trying to travel tomorrow. But, man, you got some balls going in a day early and staying five nights, six nights into the thing. Because, as Kevin knows, no, you Vegas is not. Night, though. You, you actually, you know what I would do? I would go and enjoy the Vegas no one sees. You check in the hotel, you hit the pool kind of thing you know you do some of that well, kind why of is stuff. that the vegas no one sees i feel like there's a lot of fuckers that go to the pool and shit yeah, i don't know most people game i'm saying don't go right into the gambling and the drinking and where can i buy an eight ball where's my cab driver with some bad coke you know <laughs> mr Jive hey, buddy, is out dude, there. with you guys yeah. got an eight ball from his cab driver on his way to the fucking shows that you guys split that time for halloween yeah and people have yeah. done like the 10 step on that shit <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I've been going to shows in Vegas for so long that it's actually nice to see Vegas is like. I remember going to see the Dead and even Fish and being so worried about getting busted for weed because it was a no tolerance for so long that you had to be so careful smoking outside casinos or anywhere. And now it's so nice that it's kind of living up to its liberalism that Vegas should be. So yeah, for sure. Good. Your connection's a little spotty, a little bit. I know. So, well, you that's know, all right. But... We'll just ride it out. But if I like start talking over you, I'm not trying to be a dick. That's all. Oh, no problem. I see. It's yeah. It's I don't know what's going on. Uh, it's I didn't internet. have time for sure to fix it. <laughs> um, hey, so I see a guys... Skoy. Oh, Skoy on the there? audience. Oh, Skoy um, is here. <laughs> Get out. He's yeah, gone to Chad. That's it. funny. He's making a space balls joke on you. <laughs> so there were a couple articles that came out today. I really like this whole media blitz thing, blitz thing that Fish is doing. Getting, you know, they had AP, they had Polestar, they had uh, like Dick Jambase did an article. Like, and a lot of people are. I mean, it's. It, I think it's partially just because it's the sphere, but like really leaning into it. And I don't think there was anything like super, you know, revealing that were in any of these articles, but it, it kind of cleared up the image a little bit for us. Right. So like one of the big things that was in the earlier article a couple days ago was they're going to have every show be different, which we knew. Right. And roughly 80, 80 songs. So that's what 19, 18. 20 and song. Nine. Yeah. So that's like nine, that's like nine song sets and then two song encores roughly. That's pretty reasonable. Right. Yeah, sure. And then the other big thing I saw mm -hmm. was that, no light rig, right? Which we knew, but the uh, Corona is still gonna have controls of lights, so like venue lights. So, like, I'm guessing I heard it was scaled down a scaled down truss, something they created specifically. But it was for venue it. lights, though. It's not, it's oh, not okay. a, a I, I think it's not a suspended light rig, I think it's like lights within the venue. I don't know, we'll see, like the on and off switch for the dinner, like, <laughs> the dog. he's got that nail, <laughs> yeah, 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 it's gonna be fucking great. But honestly, I think the coolest thing was the work and like the planning. I just love thinking about how long that they've been fucking planning this and going on it. And then there was one like throwaway line that uh, they're already they took a call. Trey took a call today when he was sitting down with the AP. And I don't know when he sat down with them, but that he's working on Monday Green. Like, you know what I mean? Like they're wrapping up going into the sphere and he's already like hitting it super hard. And that even before they did Game Henge, they were like, balls deep in this so uh well you know what it, it's it's like i was saying earlier you always have to be thinking down the road if yeah. like you want to see the song brother played at mondegreen you have to start the campaign now you brought kept, that kept bringing in internal internal dialogue that we had today <laughs> bringing it to the show i love it <laughs> i was gonna let it go but if you want to bring it up that's First of all, we weren't campaigning for brother. We were campaigning for slow piper or the slow build piper. And second of all, oh, slow why piper, that's it. Slow piper. Right. That was not your best tweet, my man. And then like it's the day before the sphere. Everybody's talking about the sphere. We're gonna say all this shit. And you're like, 
now's the time we're going to talk about Monday Green. This is really going to get people interested. <laughs> oh, man. And then so, so Todd, Todd said Todd said something about new Nalgene's and new tarps, new smoking. Todd, I um, saw something earlier on Twitter. Right I, I saw something earlier on Twitter where they are going to allow Nalgene's yep. for fish if they're empty. Yep, empty and water, water, all water, like plastic <laughs> water bottles, like you know your typical one. So that's good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There you go. Um, Mike Scruton yeah. is looking out for both of us. He's going to bring a brother and a Piper sign. Hell yeah. <laughs> we got to get that rolling, big... though, before Monday Green. Yeah. So in order to get it at Monday Green. So all tour, that's the shit we need to be hitting. Um, that's why I started now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That wasn't a half ass shit. So let me just throw some shit in there. Uh, the other cool thing I thought um, that that came up was we were talking about if it's going to be like how rigid the band is going to have to be. And like I was pretty adamant about the fact that they were, had to jam. Right. I didn't know how much they were going to be able to vamp on it, but they were confirming when the uh, it wasn't the Trey interview it was the other one, the creative director. But she was saying that all of the the visuals are going to be adaptable and triggerable and can be adjusted to the live performance and that the idea was to focus on the jamming first so i think that we're still going to get a couple kev we were talking about this in the green room i'm going to place the over under i think we're going to get two 20 plus minute jams in this run and a handful of micro like dozen like minute 13 15 minute jams well, I, you know what I found interesting was the comment about you two not using the technology the whole time and half the time it was being shots of the band and that allows for jams however long you want because they can just show they're not going to do that though I don't think they're going to do that I think they're going to have visuals the entire time because I mm. guarantee I don't guarantee I shouldn't say guarantee my take on that was Trey is like a perfectionist and that he saw that because he saw he went to one of those shows and he's like nah fuck this like we're gonna come up with some screensaver that we can jam to that's gonna fit in with the song, right? And and because when he was asked about it, it was like, or I forget if it was Trey or the lady, but she was like, I don't want to give it away because this airs before the shows. But like people, they, the the level, right, was to be blown away. That's like that was the basis that they were trying to get. I bet you're gonna have visuals the entire time for all of the songs. Okay. And right. that, and there you have it. Mark that at the eight fifty two mark of tonight's episode. <laughs> yeah, I I hope it's all Windows ninety eight uh, toasters. And, yes. and 90, yeah, yeah, yeah. The maze. Do you remember uh, the maze? Winamp. The Winamp shit. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Jason. I am heading out tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Yep. We'll be there by Saturday. And, we, and you're doing you're doing two of the shows Thursday and Friday. Uh, most likely, yeah. I mean, definitely Thursday. We'll see. I'm still on the fence about Friday. We'll see, but yeah, probably. Right. No. There right. is now, no did, corner, did... Todd. It's I, I love this idea, but it's a it's a fucking sphere, so it's just gonna <laughs> keep floating around and come all the way around. Did you see the That's thing funny. about <clears throat> Alaska Airlines today grounded their whole fleet? I'm hoping people don't have tickets. For Alaska, they got them. It, it started flying again. It only lasted like an hour or two. They got them back in the air. That has to feel a little concerning if you're panic. Alaska. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I remember la yeah. two years ago before Dick's. Uh, I had like what was it Frontier or something, and they were canceling flights like every day yeah. leading up to it. They had canceled, and I was so scared that we weren't going to make it. I'm there done. were a lot of people I'm that done. didn't make it actually that had issues that year. They couldn't get there, but yeah, I don't know what's go what the fuck's going on with the air industry in our country, but it's all messed jacked up. up. Boeing, man, Boeing, it's all jacked the, up. The, the airlines, I'll yeah. tell you what's going on. The airlines spend all their money lobbying Congress to stop having a high speed rail system that would put them out of business. Yeah, well, I could see. I'm in section, uh, I'm in section 103, row five, so I'm in front of the overhang and like right off the floor there i wanted to go down low so nothing else i can have a good view of the band and still see the visuals and then saturday your neck's gonna Friday, be fucked, isn't it you're gonna be like this the whole time 
I think it'll be good because I'll be on a straight line at the band. Alex has toured the venue and kind of told me where to kind of go and stuff. So I was like, well, I want to be down low one night so I can see the band fully. And then probably Friday night we'll be up in like the 300 or something. So, yeah, I, I don't have FOMO. It's fine. I don't, I'm not like <laughs> screaming in my mind, like, fuck all you guys, but it's, it's great. It's good. I don't <laughs> have FOMO because I get to watch it. I was going to ask you, Kev, do you think the webcast is going to be decent? Do you think they're going to capture any of it, or is it going to be, like, close up? I, I, I'm hoping that they put enough care and thought into it that they're going to try to get a bunch of wide shots instead of having your standard, let's look at Trey's hands for five minutes kind of thing. Yeah, yeah I and think that'll they be are interesting. Too. It'll be interesting to see how, they, how the direction goes on that, and we don't have to talk about the lights, because there won't be any, you know, really any, but... You, depending on what you can see from the screen and stuff will be interesting. Yeah. Now, what, what do we think about the stage is going to look like? Cause we all know what the U2 stage looked like. Very minimal, no stacks on it. There were no amps. Do you think it's going to have that same sparse look with just Trey with a few things behind them? You know, I think Trey's cabinets and his little hectagon or octagon <laughs> table with the candle and the, the megaphone and, Mike stack. I think the standard array that's what's on the stage is going to be there. But once you get to like the lights and smoke machine and like Corotus thing, all that's going to be gone. Right. So, but I, I don't, I think they're going to want to feel, and I don't know this, right? Like I, I didn't read in any of the interviews or anything, but my interpretation is they're going to want to feel as normal as they can. Right. Like he's going to right. want the Wurlitzer and all the shit that you see behind him. Like, He's going to want all that shit there and so they could feel comfortable and focus on the music. Is Fishman going to have the Maria Lumina with yeah, him? Marimba Lumina? And it's absolutely. probably going to be fucking featured because Petr Petrichor or uh, Mercury are definitely going to be played this run. There's no really? doubt. I'm Mer yet. I see Mercury. You're going to be stuck with red completely. You're everything in the biggest in planetarium in the entire world. Of course, they're going to play fucking Mercury. <laughs> like, there's no question. That might. That's actually a, a decent call for one of the openers. Like, I Haley's can see that being one of the tent poles. Haley's Comet have a comic going across all the way across the sphere. I think I think what's to that point, Tim, is like you almost anything being on the table or whatever they play. And you know how sometimes you feel like you can just focus on lights, do some songs and be like, oh, I just kind of like watch what they did with the lights and kind of tuned out of the song. I think this way is even better because you can just sort of focus on the video screen if it's a song that you don't really want here necessarily and just get lost in other things going on so I think that, even if it's a song you do want to hear i would do that if i were at this venue yeah, I, I have no shame in saying i would be fucking looking at the screen the entire time i i've seen trey's face i've seen fucking fish hit the <laughs> drums like literally hundreds if not thousands of times and that's not like a flex like we just all have right but i've never experienced that like i would be fucking staring at it without any shame and i probably sit too like, I don't know if they're going to maintain that rule where you have to or not. Like, they might let people stand. I would have no shame sitting down, especially if I was up high. I would sit the fuck oh, down. Yeah. I would oh, yeah. bring a bungee cord, strap myself in, <laughs> I fucking eat a chocolate, and just stare at the fucking screen for the next three hours and have the best yeah. fucking time. Oh, 300 is above I am you, super scared. What's that? <laughs> 300 above. You got to sit. You got to sit. You should. You got you to be responsible. That's one reason why I went down low for the first night was I didn't want to have to deal with the steepness of the stairs or anything. I want to be able to take my fun things and be able to, you know, enjoy the visuals and do what I need to do. So, yeah. And then we'll see after that. But, yeah, I think, I think I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that you have some reception. And for the set break hang tomorrow, we can get you to show up for a second and give us some live footage from inside the venue. Probably going to have better service I mean, than he does right now. <laughs> I would say, I was just going to say that. <laughs> Stay in our venue and better. <laughs> yeah, if you have you have good service, you should definitely call in. If not, send us a video or something so we can. Oh, that's what I wanted to fucking talk about. So I'm really excited about these after shows because did you catch the Easter eggs thing? Uh, fucking Trey was like, Oh, we're we didn't want to be obvious with the themes. It's he's, he was like talking about, he's like, It's gonna take a couple of songs or maybe a couple of nights for people to figure out what's going on. But he liked, 
he was crediting the fan base for being like those type of fans that are like dig in and look for Easter eggs and shit. I'm going on an Easter egg hunt. I'm getting, I've got my notebooks out. I'm going to have the fucking big screen up. I'm going to look for all this shit. So then in the after show, we could just be like pointing them out to me. Like, Did you guys see this? Play see this guy on the show tonight, man. Yeah, I think that's sweet that he's like, they're putting Easter eggs in and are going to try to keep it uh, interesting and not just be like, oh, it's space. <laughs> you know, like that's the theme. I don't know what it could be, though. I mean, could it be like a decade thing or like like going down? DNA bases. God. It's going to be DNA bases. Took the wind out of my sails. Now I'm just like, I don't want to talk about themes anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's the obvious stuff, directions, elements. You I, don't know. Think I don't think it's going to be any of that shit, though. I think it's going to be something tied to the history of the band or something more nuanced more meta mm. than that right like i was almost thinking you could do it like they're different verses but i don't know if they have four but they have like the game henge verse right then they have like the sci-fi verse which is kind of tied in right with cosvod are those two different verses or those ones got tied together right and then you could have like i don't know 2.0 <laughs> that's kind of like the verse with like ground room and undermine i don't know I think it will be, I don't know. It's, you know, again, who knows what the time they've had to think about it. And they feel so excited and clever about what they've done that I, you know, they're, it's almost like they're giddy about wanting to get it out there and show everybody what, what they've created. And I think that's awesome. I love the energy that, that they're pre presenting as far as being excited about playing this venue. So did you see Mike? Mike was fucking really stoked. I know. All, I retweeted tweet, that. Yeah. It's fucking great. I love to see it. Well, you know what he, you know that on the list, Trey's like, all right, everybody throw me a song or two that you might want to do at the sphere. And you know, at the top of Mike's list was back in the bubble. Oh, yeah, probably. Didn't that song suck balls, though? It did suck balls. I remember hearing that and being like, this song sucks. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Much better with Mike Gordon Band doing it. It was interesting, though, reading what he was saying about it, too, like when he went to the U2 shows and them talking about how, you know, they originally they were in line to be the first band to play the Sphere originally, but then U2 kind of did their thing and took over and they decided to wait and whatever, which I thought was really interesting. And then they went and kind of watched them and listened. The sound was different, you know, like they wanted to fix the way U2 did the sound in there. They wanted to fix some of the graphics that they did, this and that. So it's really interesting that not only were they planning it, but then they went and kind of refined what they saw with what you two did. So it'll be silver lining. Yeah. To see, right. Exactly. What they're really doing with it. Now, the one thing I didn't like in those articles was, you know, the woman that is doing the visuals for them convinced Trey that four shows, you know, he's like, Oh, we should do more. And she's like, no, 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 don't, don't do more. Cause if you do four, these will be like the most epic shows. And you want to be like, Fuck you, man! Like do more <laughs> so everybody can see it and like enjoy it. Like that's kind of bullshit. But we got next year, which is the one thing I look forward to. Is like you know this. We know they're going to next year probably double the run or triple the run. So everybody should be able to go next year. Be hard, right? We we heard eight, right? For next yeah, year, yeah, right. Eight for next year. I mean, they're definitely going to be playing more. They have a great relationship with MSG Entertainment, and you know, I don't know. Yeah, I think. I'm, I'm going to reserve that judgment until I see what they do, right, and how how the these shows go. If they're like truly curated and like masterpieces, I could understand. Okay, like you really went balls of the wall and made these four shows fucking spectacular. If it's more generically cool, like it's still cool and like you have fun, but like you feel like it'd be easy to replicate it. Then I would be with you. I'd be like, well, just fucking do a dozen of them, right? Get get <laughs> yeah, more right. heads in there. But I, I do feel, like, and I expectation fucks everything up with like everything, right? Not just music or fish, but like I can't help but have a super high level of expectation for these shows with the way they did the media blitz and and oh, yeah. I mean it's hard to fuck up too. Like you two fucking nailed it in it. In a lot of ways, it seems like they kind of mailed it in, like. They only had visuals for like a quarter of their music, and like you know, like fucking and repeated it every night. I repeated it every night, and still like was fucking amazing. So with like fish's right. creativity and stuff, I mean, I can't wait to see what it is. Yeah, I agree. 
Will has low expectations. And, That's good. That's the way to be. And like, like he says, like the Dedico ones, like that'll be interesting too to see because they are like, you know, we've talked about kind of have that list and there will be repeats and there will be, you know, certain things lined up with that. So with that, it'll be interesting to see how that compares to even these four shows, you know, going forward. So I'm convinced Dead and Company. Dead and Company is going to be the same three shows every weekend. Yeah. Close I will, I wish I was more stoked or high on Dead and Co and what they're doing, but it just the way it was all rolled out and with like the final tour and adding shows to it. It's not even like they came out. It's like we're doing 30 shows. It was like we're adding more shows. We're adding more shows. I just right now, you know, maybe this will change, but right now I'm like, mm, whatever. I'll probably check out the first night, maybe the second, and then I, I well, I'll know. check out the first three because we'll get three different shows, but this is calling back, Tim and T, to what we were talking about with the trademark of the Deadhead experience or whatever. This thing's going to go on tour to planetariums or something somewhere without Dead and Company playing with just music piped in. Yeah, that, that would be fucking sweet. I'd be all about I would go. I would go see that. We have a planetarium for, for in Reading. 20 like, bucks, right by me. For 20 oh, bucks, yeah. I'd go see it. But if they want 200 or something for the Deadhead experience, 200. you can have it. <laughs> not gonna bring back the planetarium there. laser shows <laughs> we have a planetarium by me that still does laser floyd every the first friday of every month they fucking do it and i asked Fuck the guy because yeah. we brought my daughters just to the museum not knowing that they did that and i was like you guys still do that he's like yeah they haven't stopped they've been doing it since like the 70s or whatever just the first friday of every month for fucking like 40 years I'm can like, you bring your amazing. kids I mean, I could. I don't think there's a like a rule against it, but they wouldn't be into it. I don't think so. Why not? You, you, well, I don't know, man. Like, when you have kids, like you, like before you have kids, you're all like, "Yeah, my kids are gonna be cool. They're gonna like all this shit that I like." And then, like, no, they have their own personalities. They like fucking well, rainbows well, and unicorns kids. and like Gabby Cat yeah, and fucking Bluey. Yeah. Like, they don't give a shit about Fish or Floyd or any of that stuff. It's great. No, it's good for them. I'm not gonna like force that on them. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, like. They're not, they're not little miniature. If your interests, right? They all have their own fucking interests. When my when my oldest was five, I gave her a bunch of uh, Hannah Montana, Selena Gomez CDs, and I slipped in Dark Side of the Moon, and she used to listen to that shit. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just got the stubborn like. <laughs> I I you well, her said... though. Yeah, I've taken. She's been to shows and she liked it. She likes the dancing. She likes the community aspect of it. But like when we're driving to school or whatever, I'll I'll play Fisher or, or the Dead or something, and she's like, "Turn it off, <laughs> turn it off." You're ruining her vibe before school, man. You should be throwing on whatever she's. What is she like? Dora is Dora the Explorer still big? Right, like the drive know. to school is like her, like walking up to bat music. You need that walk up music to get her pumped up for the day. It's throwing on a good melt. You know, where no, just- I think the problems oh. my wife got to her too soon because she likes like fucking like Lady Gaga and like there's other like adult music that she like fucking loves. It's just she wants to be like her mom. Though. She wants she to be wants like her, to mom. her mom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she likes that. I like it. It's just not for her. That's OK, though. She'll yeah. come back around. Yeah. Um, well, you, you, you know what the thing to do is? I always used to joke that I cut my hair and got a real job and wore a suit because I wanted my kids to turn out to be cool. To rebel against me right you know? right <laughs> yeah no i mean she's fucking cool though like i don't know she goes to school and like with the fucking war tutu and like these like rainbow spin like uh rainbow pants and like you know what i mean like my parents would never i had to tuck my shirt in i had to comb my hair right. everything like I'm i had to be like prim and prim. yeah i was like it was, looked like yeah. i was going to fucking like you know law right. school or something when i was like six years old in her, we let her pick that shit out. I was like, who gives a shit? Right, my mom used to give, socks. I was like, I don't care. We're going into therapy session mode. My mom used to tell me, "You're a reflection of me. You can't wear that." Yeah, I'm right, not yeah, a you reflection iron of your you. Shirt. I am a reflection I, what, of Kevin. <laughs> what will they think of me if you don't iron your shirt? I was like, they, they think that you didn't iron my shirt. It's fine. Hey, nobody gonna think nothing. Nobody's even gonna notice. No, the <laughs> ironing thing stuck with me though. Like, there's shit that your parents do that, like the. I, I can't stand wrinkled clothes. Like my all of that I, I you gotta have your shit ironed, but uh 
Not on me though. I don't give a shit. But like with the kids, I'm like, all right, let me let me see that t-shirt. All I'm gonna trigger you. Tim the next time I see him and wear the wrinkleless shirt I can. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about you wearing it. I'm talking about my my kids. No, my God, I'm turning into my parents. What the hell's happening? <laughs> right, it's a reflection of you. <laughs> right. <laughs> what the fuck oh so i want to talk about something else you got the uh we were just talking about that article from live nation and i was like hmm something smells like the propaganda fishy. piece the, yeah, propaganda. the propaganda like something's they fishy knew they knew it sure they knew it was shit. coming wall street journal uh reported that congress and the de- no is the department of justice is going after live nation with an antitrust lawsuit which We'll see what the fuck happens. I mean, this has come up before. Merrick Garland is on the case. Right, and nothing happens. Although, I feel like there's enough bipartisan and, uh, like, I don't want to say unanimous, because I don't think it's unanimous, but I think there's enough widespread frustration and interest in this that... What happened? You wonder what happened. It was fucking Taylor Swift and AOC couldn't get that's fucking- that's what the local news report is started yeah. off with after the Taylor Swift fiasco in 2022 100%. is how it started off. So which ironically, I don't think that they were uh <laughs> I don't even think Live Nation was the promoter for Taylor Swift. I think it was another company, but that's all right. Uh so, so they're so they're gay. It's it's like Al Capone. He oh never my. got caught for killing people or anything. What he got I, caught for was tax evasion. You know, the Ticketmaster and Live Nation have been scum for years, and they get caught for something stupid. But that yeah. might be the thing that tears them down. <laughs> oh, yeah. What Whatever is that ticket, Ticketmaster? Whatever it what? takes to tear them down. Whatever it takes to tear them down. Well, I don't care if it's something stupid like that, Kev, or something big. Like Whatever it takes to start dismantling that ridiculousness is fine. Just do they, it. They, there's, I mean, you think there's a chance that I'm not saying that they shouldn't do it. I'm just curious, like to prepare myself that it all backfires because I feel like greed is pretty unanimous in like the corporate world. <laughs> and like, even if they're dismantled, whatever other companies come up to well, I, do that, you, they're you, still going to be fucking taking advantage of people. You, you got to go back to AT and you got to go back to AT and T. AT and T they dismantled, and you ended up with Sprint, and you ended up with all these other companies, T Mobile, AT and T. You know, and then they now compete have with each other, and the market reduces the cost and shit. Right. So, and now they basically gave this give the shit away. I saw a commercial for that. They were like, "We'll buy your phone. We'll give you money, and you don't have no contract." Like all this like crazy shit. I was like, "Wow, that's like how far things have changed." I mean, I'm sure there's some uh, fine print that fucks you over. I don't trust anybody. I think I'm at the age in my life where it's like literally without any other reason except for just have gotten this far that I'm like, nope, don't trust you. Well, <laughs> yeah, when you're young, you're like, don't trust anybody over 30. And then all of a sudden you're 30 and you know you can't trust yourself. And it's just, it's all downhill from there. And then from then on, you're like, don't trust anybody. There's no, there's no qualifiers. It's just, I just don't trust you. Sorry. Trust no one. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel optimistic that something is going to happen with this one. I don't think it's the type of thing that's going to go away. You know, I don't think they could just be like, you know, it's a talking point. Okay, because it's not even tied to a political campaign or like a, like a talking point. Right? Like it's like it's a fucking it's out there. I don't think this is going to disappear except for uh, I don't even want to say that what I was just thinking out loud because, you know, we're not going to go down that road. But uh, anyway. It's very Sorry. interesting. I, yeah, I, I like, kind of derailed that because I had dark thoughts of a. I, I know you did. <laughs> I was like, "Fuck, this could get really bad." <laughs> well, you, you know, yeah. see, well, see, um, okay, yeah, you know, yeah, don't talk religion or politics, but see, Will saying the local promoters coming back, I, I agree with you. That might be part of it, but also if. The need existed because you didn't have that. You know, there's a guy, all good, Tim Walther in Maryland, and he's been putting on shows for 30 plus years now, and he's stuck it out. It can be done, but it's something you have to completely have your heart in. Yeah. You know, you, you really have to believe if you're the promoter on that level and you don't want to be dirty, like you're saying. Yeah, I'm wondering if it was the promoter side of it or the ticket side of it that really, I guess it's the ticket master. Well, it's 
because that whole article, right? The Live Nation one was like, don't blame the ticketing service. It's the promoter service. Uh, you know, but I was like, you, you know, it's the Spider-Man meme. Like, you're the same fucking people that are blaming each other. And Wait. That, that well, other, was, other article was ahead. the first half of that article was that, but then the second half of the article was Live Nation is the promoter now. So they're right, like, right. You know, we, we are the promoters and we get paid to be the promoters and respect us and know that we're doing this for you. But it was that article was so messed up and confusing and bullshit. <laughs> like, well, and, and there was a whole nother article about kickbacks. There was a congressional report about, you know, Live Nation would sometimes mm -hmm. get 90% of the money back from people it allowed to do business with them. So, yes, it's all shady on every level. <laughs> yeah. But and the, whole, we, and the platinum tickets and like where they come from and then like the third party ass like selling them off of there that I'm sure they get a cut somewhere in between all of that shit too off of StubHub. So did yeah. you see the StubHub thing with that woman Luna or L Luria or something who 280 people got turned away at the door who had bought tickets on StubHub? Somebody was reselling the same ticket over and over again on StubHub. That sucks. But, but I that, that was the whole point them. of going to stop up is that you had protection against shit like well, that. You trust them, but even if they give you the money back, you're still screwed. You're still you went fucking, downtown, you showed up, you know. That's, that's the happened worst to me part before. About, I hate that shit. Yeah, that's the worst part about that shit. With so much shit today is like, you know, like even like with Uber Eats or something, you order it and half your order is missing. You complain about it and like, oh, we'll refund your money. You're like, yeah, but I'm still hungry. Like, you're not getting me the food that I just ordered that I want. So, like, you're going to a concert and they're like, oh, sorry, you can't get in. We'll refund your money. Like, great, but I wanted to see the show. Like, that doesn't help me any in getting what I paid for and what I wanted. So, it goes back to the whole customer service thing and like how fucked up things are these days on all levels. Like, it just sucks. I think there's right, like well, a when there's enough back against outrage. that too. Yeah, exactly. There's enough public outrage right. that people are like, I'm not dealing with that shit anymore. And you, end, you end up with a Skull and Roses situation where 90% of the people have gotten their refund, refunds now. The money yeah, that's one of those things where like, you start threatening lawsuits and, and shit and you're, you know, guy's not out of the country yet with his bag of money and you're like, dude, <laughs> like... You you know that fucking guy man he should have had that shit from the beginning that's some bullshit yeah. why did they why cancel did they, they blamed the money they, so that was the fucking ironic part is like oh we just don't have the funds to make it work sorry no refunds and then a week later like okay you get 90 percent back You're like fucking yeah, so dude, they do have the funds. seriously they did have the that's some they bullshit. never really said willie they never really said why they were canceling it was kind of implied that they just couldn't get it together is the feeling I got from you know the underlying message was I thought and... they did say that it was money that the that they had losses from the year before and that they never right, recovered but that have to make to it with... happen. But but it's so close to it. You should have already had the place rented, all the money down for all the bands. Did you like book all this stuff and then just never pay the bills? Is that Probably. what happened? Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what happened. I bet. I don't know. We got to get off this. I'm all, you're fucking harsh on my vibe, guys. I was all pumped for the sphere. I think I was having dreams of all the different crazy shit that we're going to see this weekend. Oh, I got let a question drop, well, here. Let me, let me drop some good news here real quick. Yeah, yeah, I drop it. Know, I'm sure you guys saw it, but our favorite band, second favorite band, my favorite band, Tape Choice announced their one, well, their first show of 2024 today. Like, they're going to actually play June 16th up in Berkeley after vampire weekend show at the greek oh so, well, that's gonna be cool for Sid, maybe 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 a little ezra sit in on that show possibly perhaps maybe <laughs> but i mean how I'm, I'm extremely excited about that because i didn't think we were getting any shows this year so with their crowded schedule that's very exciting and again tickets go on sale friday but usually use like the dice app and other means to get their tickets not Ticketmaster. so yeah. that's exciting too so if you're in the area or you're out here or you want to Think about going it's gonna be an awesome show so i got to, i got to watch vampire weekends coachella set now i'll preface this by saying the only song i know of theirs is oxford comma and i've always really liked the song but i never dove into the band and they were a really good straight up rock and roll band who wrote catchy tunes i i don't see why people are down on that band they were really i mean i'm not gonna jump up and throw their cd one but if I had a chance to see him, I'd probably go see him. It was a good rock and roll show. Let me ask you, Kat, what'd you think of that gold rush 
suite they did that had the Cumberland awesome, mixed in it. Right. Yeah, Cocaine yeah, and Cowboy the and, yeah. and they threw in Cumberland. That was, that was so fun. It was fun. Like it, it shows that range. It kind of reminds me a little bit of like Weezer in that sense, where like they have these chops to be able to venture into different forms of music and like play them all. So it kind of goes from that poppy, punky, rocky feel to then like sort of rockabilly country to like it was really fun. It was awesome. And you know, of course, TC back there on the drums was awesome. And yeah, I love that he wears his 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 Tabor's Choice shirt at the Goose Show and then at the backstage of the Goose Show and that stuff. That's that's big, big exposure marketing. for them, I think. Like there's totally. a lot of eyes on the Goose because uh, and also because it was free on YouTube. So I feel like there were probably a ton of people that learned about Tabor's Choice through that. Yeah, you know, it's thing how people like the drummer from Vampire Week wearing a Tabor's Choice shirt. You're like, well, actually, it's the drummer from Tabor's Choice in Vampire Week and wearing. That's how I think of band. it. I'm right? not big on Vampire Weekend, and I feel bad. Like, I'm not allowed to say that now that Kev kind of set it up that I'm an asshole for not being high on him. But, like, I don't know. Like, it's weird because, like, I'm, like, anybody could make fun of, like, our fandom, right? And, like, how much I'm into, like, the bands that I'm into. But I always found, like, with the indie bands, especially, like, the simpler, like, that were just, like, very basic chord progressions, very, very basic songs, which is fine, right? Like, they're poppy. But, like, whenever you see the, like, hardcore fandom – and like vamp it and like love for like such like basic i don't, I don't know I, i'm gonna stop there because i know i'm gonna piss people off but just it, <laughs> it doesn't doesn't register with me at least with like me, pop me... artists and shit i could be like oh their voice is phenomenal right like pop artists when i was growing up i don't know pop artists now but like you know like christina aguilera and like britney spears and shit like they were like they had really good voices they were like really good dancers like i get it but like then there was like this move to like indie bands that didn't have particularly great voices. They weren't particularly great songs, but people were just like, I fucking love this music. <laughs> you, you know what? You know, I, I watched two other things. Tried to. I watched the first two songs of Sublime. Not my cup of tea. I heard I'm that other guy. people will agree with you, Kev. I wanted to follow up on that. A lot of people were saying that it's their son that that's the the problem that it doesn't work anymore i don't know yeah. if that's true or not but i i did hear people saying that right and then the other thing i watched was no doubt and i am a guef gwen stefani stan now she, yeah, she's yeah. older than me and she could dance circles around me i mean she was up there ska doing some kicking she climbed up on speakers i mean and the songs were all catchy another pop band you know sometimes is it's that okay pop? i don't know if pop that's pop. i guess that's pop I don't yeah, know. That's it's, it's punk pop. It's punk you know, pop. Ska, yeah. A little bit of ska, a little bit of punk, yeah. a little bit of pop. Yeah. Well, speaking I of that, Ken, what did you ska. think? What did you think of the blur set that went all off the rails with with uh, what's his name getting pissed at the crowd because the crowd didn't know the songs and like blur? I, I did not. I did not catch blur. I did not watch the next day. I'm gonna have that to go back and check out there. That's funny. What? So he had a meltdown on stage. Well, he just he was trying to get into it and sing the songs, and nobody was doing anything because they don't know the songs and they don't know Blur, and they're like, "Why?" It, and then people are like, "Why is he getting mad that the fans don't know him when they should have never put them in this lineup because they're right. you know this whatever. isn't England twenty years ago, right?" <laughs> but what's interesting is like he's played there before, and Rose has played there before, and stuff, and there is a crossover there, but it's like Coachella has changed so much in the last few years that it's gotten. I mean. To me, it's very weird. I know she's huge, but to have Lana Del Rey close the show is such an interesting closer because, I mean, talk about a band that doesn't leave you on a high. You know what I mean? Like, those songs are so come down. And, like, I know she's got Legion of Fans and she's awesome in her own right and everything. But when I'm closing out a festival, I want fucking something that, you know, closes a festival for me. So... I think it's weird, and that just speaks to the way Coachella has changed over the years, and what it what it caters to now, and the crowd and stuff. So it's interesting. Hey, can we um can we try a hypothetical exercise? Mm -hmm. I don't not that I don't love talking about Coachella, but like I don't know anything about it, so I feel a little bit uncomfortable riding the Coachella <laughs> thing too long. Yeah, give us uh, a left turn. All right, so well, Sunday that's, morning. That's how Kevin and I go, though. See how that started when Vampire Weekend into like I know, and then I'm like, oh, too choice. many Indian Vampire pop. Let's bring it back. <laughs> All right, so Sunday morning, we were talking about themes for the Sphere shows, and somebody was like, the four hosts, the four horsemen, the four hosts of Wook Plus are going to be the, the four nights, which is obviously like a joke, but I was like, that is interesting. What would your song be? Like, if it were, hypothetically, if you could pick 
the set like like the show like you were you are making it what would you open like what would t's opener be or kevin's opener be or you don't even have to do opener like what would be like the song that would be like the highlight of your your night oh i would have, just have to split okay. open oh yeah fuck <laughs> i was like i want the melt <laughs> All right, any other ones? Give me a couple songs. Give me a flavor of your your show. Like I would I would want like split open what's the use? Um something like maybe uh a song I heard the ocean sing. I would want that kind of mid-level moody, you know, dark edgy kind of thing. That's a good middle night. I don't think that's a good opening night and I don't think that's a good closing night, but that's a good like riding it out a little space, a little fucked up. Careful with your dosage and and get out of there. Okay. I I could deal with that, or not deal with it. I would like that actually. What do you? What about you, T? What were you thinking? I see dead on. I was, I was antelope. I would want an antelope in there. I'd like a divided sky in there. I'd take like a fluff in there. Oh, a real love, old, as, real epic. Like as a far as one point oh. <laughs> and as far as a mic, you know, whatever. I love a mule. I'm a big mule fan with Mike, so I would love to hear a mule because that song gets me going all the time. So. Yeah, I mean some of that, some of that. Right, old so we're throwing shit. you on the end, your night four to send everybody out super high. I like both of those, and I would totally have gone melt. That's kind of what I was thinking, Kev. But since you guys are there, I'll go night one, and I'm gonna go kind of dancey, like a 2001. And mm. honestly, it's like Timber and fucking like Undermine, and like they're like really groovy, heavy, and then maybe a, a drawn out gumbo or meat in the middle where we actually get like a full flavor. Maybe Mr. C. I don't know. Camel Walk, like something kind of of that flavor. I don't know the exact yeah. set list, but you know that flavor of like the Mr. C or, or Camel Walk. Yeah, way fucking one hundred percent. Okay, so so what song do you want to see for the visual potential of it? Oh yeah, that's probably what I should have done since it's a sphere. I was just thinking vibe. Um, I think two thousand one has a lot of fucking. Because you could build up all sorts of visuals. Like you're, I don't know if you saw it with fucking uh, YouTube, but they had like the the cube that turned into the sphere, and they did the things with the numbers. Mm -hmm. I feel like 2001, you could really build something up and then like it, have it explode on the climax. That would be totally, sick. totally. And I think to your point, Tim, a fun groovy thing is like having the howling thrown in there it would be super fun. That would be cool. You know, that would be really cool with the visuals. Melt would be fucking obviously would be fucking fantastic. Right. I, I, I would I would love to see for an instrumental what's the use because with the slow I think they could do some weird drawn out video you know visuals like just slime pulling apart blood dripping from the ceiling or something <laughs> and then um and then maze. I think visuals for maze going through a maze the whole time, that would be badass. It should be the Windows fucking maze runner thing. Like, yeah. Oh, what about wingsuit? They fucking like, you know that Disney ride glide or whatever? Yeah, like, soaring. Wingsuit. Yeah, where you're soaring, right? We're just like, you just fucking, that would be dangerous though. I could see some spun out wolf just like going for it. They're like, we're going. Because <laughs> you almost get, you almost get a little of that when you're sitting in that seat on that ride anyway. You're kind of like, whoa. You know what I mean? I can't imagine that in the sphere kind of in that zone. You, what? Right over the edge. <laughs> Well, my, my kid was like, somebody's going to fall or jump. And I was like, somebody jumped at a fish show a couple falls ago. And she's like, why? Because of the music? I was like, be nice. Yeah, because, because <laughs> of the music. <laughs> oh, my God. I would love a fucking thread this weekend. Thread thread amazing. A super jammed out, awesome, dark, dark thread. So, so do we do we get a debut with it being the sphere? and everything else attached to it are they going to bust out a new song or do they wait till summer they wait till summer i think i don't think we get any new debuts i'm not even sure that evolve the album is going to have a debut i think epitaph might come on it right like which is kind of a debut but i i think um i think it's gonna be a lot of songs because we've heard so many new songs the past two years i don't know yeah i agree with that too i think summer tour is the time for that and and then by the festival, those have been enough where you're going to get some of those a little bit more jammed out, a little bit more fine tuned for that. And we'll see what happens. That. I think for the sphere, it's kind of the old, like everything is pre programmed and in there. And I don't think there's anything new coming out. 
at this point. I could be wrong. Kev could be right. We'll see. But yeah, I don't know. I'm getting so fucking hyped right now because I'm just thinking about like. Sorry, I was reading the chat. Yeah, I didn't mean to like derail, but like <laughs> somebody said Fuego, and then I was thinking like Seven Below, and I was like, you could have Seven Below where it's all icy and like snowing in there into a fucking Fuego where just like fire ripples through the whole screen and like you know what I mean like you could do so many cool things with the segways and fucking like oh my god and to I your point on that Tim theme, <laughs> theme wise even like a whole space theme because they have so many space songs that have to do with space that you could do and like a whole earth type elements and things like there's so many different ways to, to wrap into the themes as well the the sand is earth things cool. are aliens and I'm like oh no there's a goose the, the sand they can go and just like do those pan shots of going down a beach you know or maybe they can have rocky or and like Apollo. an hourglass yeah like or an hourglass shit the like the falling. dune worm hourglass yeah. would be cool you what know, the fuck's going like on with in, our chat it's all fucked up right now some of the lawrence of arabia things oh wow oh, yeah, it is doing yeah. weird things yeah, 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 get yeah. the Lawrence of Arabia kind of shots, like dune shots of just deserts for sand. That Landscape, would be pretty fantastic. Deserts. Do you yeah. think? Uh, yeah. What do you think? What do you think is going to be the jam of the run? Do you Wave think of hope. Be a big jam. Wave of Wave hope. hope is going to be the one. If they're going to do it, that one has the potential for so many visuals and so many places to go. I hate that you're probably right. Oh wow, chat is actually going like crazy right now in reality, but it's not showing up on StreamYard. So I have this here. Interesting. Um, oh, well, that's Dune, going crazy. Mike, Mike was saying that Dune Part Two for Sand, and as he's throwing Yarmouth out there again, fucking got to cut <laughs> that shit out. So what is it? Is Mike going to get a song every night? I think so. Probably. Yeah, probably. I think he's probably. Yeah. What do you call it? Like. Uh, I don't know what the word I'm thinking of, but like he's contractually Trey, obligated. No, I think Trey was probably <laughs> fair, right? With like, like he was very specific about the way they divvied it up, right. and I think that we'll, he probably we'll had more. a lot of say in that. We'll do mole for you, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I think mole though. If they're gonna do, if they're gonna do a new Mike song, I think mole's the one that they need to take out and like fucking finally give us a decent one. I, I think meat might be one of Mike's that show up. I think that has potential for visuals with it, and the disjointed sound would be cool, you know? Oh, meat would be sick. Yeah. Man, chat is going off do. right now, and it's not showing. I, I can't pull up the comments. I wish I could. It sucks. I see somebody put, do we get a Fishman song from Seawill? And I would love to hear Ass Handed with just ass cheeks on the sphere on the vision. <laughs> Giant ass cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> that would be sweet. Yeah. Is there any songs that you don't want to see, or do you think uh, drift while you're sleeping? Yeah. yeah, you were. You're definitely yeah. getting a drift. You'll probably get a beneath the sea of stars. Sea of stars um, would be sick, though. I don't mind that, though. Yeah, I, don't I think mind that. that would actually be one that. where the visuals redeem it and make it even better. Right. I, I hope that everything's yeah. right doesn't make the cut. Because everything's right, I don't think lends itself to any visuals or anything. It's it is what it is. It's the parable, you know. Yeah, they could go the whole. So Todd, no, Matthew was saying shipwreck, but I was thinking like with Mama and Caspian and shipwreck, like the whole seafaring, you know, thing. They could go that way, but I don't like that idea. I think, yeah, I think that would be probably uh, a, a wasted opportunity. See, that's the thing too is you only have four nights, and it's like the hype is so high. It's like whatever you choose, I feel like the expectations. Again, you got to we got to got to bring these down, temper our expectations a little bit. Nah, fuck it, I'm hyped. I can't wait. Well, I need it too because the I'm other hyped. thing is we're we're gonna be up at like fucking what time is the show gonna start? Eleven Eastern. So like oh, we're yeah, gonna, it's be gonna be fucking late. doing the after yeah. show at like three in the morning. Holy shit! Yeah. Two, why yeah, did we agree two. to that? Yeah, I don't know why we decided. <laughs> Why it's did we agree to what that? We do. The, the after show is so cool. What do you, I mean, after you watch a stream for years, I was always like, you watch the stream, you're online hanging out with everybody talking about it. And then it's over and you're sitting alone by yourself. Having the after show is a great way to decompress and, you know. Yeah, I hope people come and, and hang out. Awake anyway, right? You kind of already have that, that like up feel. You're like, kind of like, oh, I want to get. I need to talk to somebody and like this. I mean, for you guys, yes, it's three in the morning and all you East coasters, that's a little rough, but 
for everybody west of that with the other time zones it's not that late and i think you need that you know like it's there's nobody nice west of the east there. coast we're the only ones i don't know what you're talking about no honestly i do the so same true. path so i do the same trajectory every show that we do especially the west coast shows is by the end of the fourth quarter like the end of the second set i'm like really into it but i can feel myself like drifting and getting tired encore i'm like fuck what did i do and then the 15 minutes leading up to the after show I'm just so fucking energized from the show. You know what I mean? Like, I, and like I turn around and by the time we're here, I'm like, you know, the problem is that I don't actually through the after show is great. The, what the real problem is, is after the after show, I'm so fucking wired that I can't fall asleep until like five or six in the morning anyway. And then, and then uh, I'm fucked. And then yeah, the baby what, wakes up. That's the problem is it screws up your next day. And then, then it just compounds every day after that because you're up and then up and then, you know, so yeah, by, by Sunday, it's uh it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> by Monday, it's rough. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Etsy, I can imagine it actually. <laughs> and you'll get to see him. You'll get to see him halfway there at halftime during the members hangs on, on his halfway to being that wasted at 3 a.m. That I'm really, really looking forward to these member hangs for this run. I mean, I always enjoy them, but I think that the timing is going to be really great. Uh, and we're going to have so much shit to talk about and dissect. I got to figure out how to capture the screen, too. Right. If you don't know yep. what the members only thing is, because I see lots of names that aren't green in the chat popping up. It's like two ninety nine a month. You have to go on your browser on a laptop or a computer to do it. But basically, join. we... We dropped some special stuff there. We've had some Taper's Choice stuff. We have special, we have chats. Just, you know, we did the uh, the thing with the bracket. We yeah. When we did the uh, seating for the bracket, we had a members only thing. So they got a sneak peek at how that breaks down. Yeah. Will's going to be messaging hey, in cool. from the sphere. That, that was your pitch for the night. No, you did a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I like this, the cup of coffee one. Yeah. Yeah, no, the Easter egg, the Easter egg hunt, though, is going to be, I think, the focus for me, trying to capture all of that. And, uh, and of course, listening, uh, listening to the music. Thanks, Mike. Speaking of that, I kind of just, I just got myself like, all right, I need to get a good night's sleep tonight because we have to fucking rage tomorrow. (laughs) Is there any other topics? We don't have a set list for the lot. I can't wait for it to get back to live. Ooh, one more housekeeping. I do want to bring this up because I was editing a lot today. The Wookiee Awards are next week in one week. Um, so tune in for that. Like and subscribe and actually ring. No, not ring the bell, but do the subscribe. So that way you don't miss it. Because that's going to be fucking legit. I'm very, very excited about the Wookiees this year. I'm glad we brought it back. We were on the fence about it. I, maybe I was. I don't know if you guys were. But I was like, after last year, I was kind of burnt out by it. And I was like, I don't know. It's gotten weird. But we decided to bring it back. And I'm really glad we did. We have some really awesome awards lined up. Some great little surprises Definitely. i think it's gonna be a fun show yeah see will go to bed get some sleep look for me at the sphere if you guys are going though i'll be wearing my woke plus shirt friday night or thursday night for sure so i'll be standing out. i'll make sure i have that on so fun. yeah you gotta be safe t and stick strap in don't well you're down on the floor you'll be all right you're proud i'm, I'm down the floor i'm you. down in 100 <laughs> i'll be all right i got the wife there to hold on to me to make sure i don't fall over so she's oh, good about true. that what do you think, Kev? What do you think the over under on T making the rest of the shows? I'm I almost guarantee he's going to all four. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I can see that. Uh, there's no way you go the first night and then you're not like, ah, oh, you're definitely going to go to the rest. Even the if night. even if he's solo for the last two, if the wife yeah, is going like, to send yeah, Alex out to the spa or fucking like get her all like the That's... the deluxe treatment so you can fuck so yeah, if, can... if you're out there and you have an extra for saturday or sunday he's make going sure to be looking he's not looking right now but he will be looking i guarantee it <laughs> you'll see me out there you'll see me out there in the one <laughs> oh, i got terrible fomo now That's right happy to be here thanks a lot hang guys. Out we love you. all right let's go see you guys next time Find me at the spear. Yeah. <laughs>